Hello, we're going to do another lesson today on how to play Will You Marry Me by Jellyfish. So, um, this is kind of a difficult one to, uh, to, to really do accurately because it wasn't done on any studio recordings. It was more just a live track. So, um, obviously the quality of some of the live recordings is, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. So, I think this is uh, as accurate as I can get it. So, it starts, the intro is... I know, I know, I'm prematurely wrong In taking a false stand Asking for your hand At least I think that's what's being played <laughs> So it's uh, a B power chord Just uh, eight notes strumming A G F sharp when he plays the E power chord, he plays a little figure. So he's, um, you know your E power chord, I'm sure. You're just playing from the fifth on the A to the fourth, back down to the second. Back to the F sharp, so. Back to the G. And it changes here. It's uh, basically he's employing a uh, E with a G sharp bass. So it's the fourth fret on the E and the seventh fret on the A. So all together. It goes into the main part of the verse. Um, it's just basically B minor to a D. Basically, kind of bluesy. If you've ever played any status quo music, you'll know this pretty easily. So he's just playing a B power chord, and then he's moving his pinky from the uh, ninth on the A to the eleventh. And you can move it to a D power chord up here as well at the tenth fret. So you're basically moving from the 12th on the A to the 14th. And he does a little chromatic lick down back to the B. It's kind of a stonesy kind of guitar part as well. You'll hear in the background often, I think it's Jason that's playing this part, because uh, Roger is also playing the guitar as well. So it's, um, I think there's this part as well. It's kind of similar part, uh, it's just barring the D, G and B on the 4th fret and then you're hammering on on the 6th fret on the D and the 5th fret on the B so hammering on and pulling off and for the D part you're barring the D, G and B string on the 7th fret and the same pattern again, you're just hammering on at the ninth on the D and the eight on the B. Pretty simple. So here it's tuxedo time. It's the next part, 
So it's the chromatic lick starting on A, <clears throat> starting on the 5th fret on the um, E string, the 4th fret on the A string. So you're just moving chromatically on the A string, 4, 5, 6, 7. Think of it like a A dominant seventh lick. So the fifth fret on the E, four, five, six, seven on the A and on the D string, four, five, seven. So then you're starting on the fourth for the diminished lick now on the A string. Four to seven, and then fifth on the D, and then the third on the G. So four, seven on the A, five on the D, three on the G, six on the G, five on the B, and then three on the E, five on the E. So all together. And the next part is going from a B minor to an A to an E power chord to a low E chord. From now on. A guitar figure going on underneath that. So it's on the um, G and B strings, and you're bending. It's kind of like a vibrato, you kind of bend it. So you're just bending the um, G string. Both strings together, it's, uh, it's kind of a it's a hard one to do on an acoustic, but you'll you kind of hear what I'm getting at. So that's on both the seventh uh, on the G and B strings. And over the E, you're playing on the fourth on the G and fifth on the B. And then you move down from the second on the G to the third on the B and you're bending you're bending it's a hard one to do again but you're bending the second fret to the E position here so all together so Hopefully that'll give you an idea anyway. And then it ends with uh, this really, really cool chord. Which is just a D with an E in the bass. You can play it. Maybe without the F sharp ringing out. Like that. Very jazzy sounding chord. You can play it down here. Just a D that you normally play. But rather than letting the open D string ring out here, you're just going to cover the second fret on the D string. So all together. there is A, E, A, E, A, then it goes back into the verse again, kind of repeats itself then from there, uh, there's nothing really, I don't think there's anything else other than the solo, which is just pretty much B 
minor pentatonic mixed in with maybe a bit of you know if you go up a minor chord you're in the D minor pentatonic box which he kind of mixes in a bit of Uh, then it goes to the shuffle. That's the outro part, which goes on maybe three minutes more than it should. <laughs> it's just D major. Again, like the verse. E. Seven. That's pretty much it. It's pretty much the whole song. So uh, if you have any comments or feedback, let me know. See if I got anything wrong. Cheers.